Welcome back to Randers. Fifth, uh, no, the last round, sorry, uh, which will uh, give us the roster of the last 32 players. Here in the European Championship, five pins in Denmark. The opponent of this game is uh, between. So I mean, the opponents are Paolo Marcolin from Italy, the guy that you see here now, and uh, Pavel Svoboda from Czech Republic. The referee that you see here is Oliver Pind, which is also a five-pin player and has been also a juniores. Let's now we have the drawing to see we will play with the white ball. And then just a small bio about the players. Paolo Marcolin was born in a, a Nazionale Pro player from Italy, so the best ones that you can find in Italy. Was born in Somma Lombardo, close to Varese in 1976. Actually he plays for Centro Centro Biliardo Sportivo Massé in Sesto Calende Varese, which is also run by him, so it's his club, in, uh, also where he's working actually. And uh, he had a lot of good results during his career, so third place in 2019 in Pistoia for the World Championship, uh, losing against uh, Ciro Davide Rizzo, and then won the World Championship over there. So was uh, third place also in Padua in the 1994 for the Juniores Championships and uh, champion with the national team in Bern in 2007 and runner-up in San Marino in 2011 when was Germany then to win that. Also Italian champion in five pins in uh, the master category. It's the third one, if, third one if you start from the top where he actually is playing in 2017 was uh, runner-up in 2022 in the 9-pins Goriziana Tutti Doppi, so 9-pins in San Vincent, and also runner-up this year in uh, 2022 in uh, San Vincent, and was losing against Achille Mignolo, which is also another Italian player here, we've already seen him play yesterday. The actual queue, which is using uh, Paolo, it's uh, a nuclear queue, and he also has a nickname, it's called Genius, Genio in Italiano, and uh, very smart guy, very funny. Uh, he's surely uh, recognized as a very good player and also a very, very good man. Let's start and see what's happening over here. Nothing happened as, uh, from the start, now Marcolin has to take the rest is not used to play with the extension doesn't like it so in italy we use uh, longest cues to approach these kind of shots but now is uh, using the rest which i think it's even the best way to play on these kind of shots I was playing not fast uh, just to approach the pins no pins good uh, speed good defense so now it's turn to pavel's Svoboda either to play on the short or on the long rail. I think he has the possibility to play it both. Uh, it's his chance. Marcolin was winning uh, the first uh, match with the Thomas Andersen 60-53, uh, 60-36 and uh, Svoboda was uh, losing against Thomas Andersen 60-29, 60-51. So uh, if uh, Svoboda is not winning and very well with uh, Marcolin, it's out of the tournament, while on the other hand, uh, Marcolin should just win to win also the group, and then uh, we will see uh, the, classific the, sorry, the classification, how it will be after all the groups, it will be depending on the match won, on the set, and maybe even also on the average. Which means the pins that and the total of amount of points that uh, a player has done divided by the pins that he, have, he has suffered. So easy shot for Paolo Marcolin, direct shot on the pins. 
six points. Quite uh, a good defense. He can uh, even Svoboda approach a two cushion shot. That was his doing. Quite well played. Little bit uh, too close, so not on the pins, but Marcolin is finding uh, quite the same shot. He will play with the reverse English on the long rail to put, uh, then to, p to approach the white one on the pins. Perfect. Please notice also the fact that the yellow ball is linked to the short, uh, sorry, to the long rail, which is uh, a very good defense. And it's done on purpose. So the ball is coming on the short rail and coming back close to the long rail. So now Svoboda has to turn a little bit, uh, use a lot of English to approach a short rail, then get the yellow ball. He has to decrease the speed if he wants to play for the pins. And uh, maybe if he wants to play faster, he can get uh, the full ball and find a different defense. It's Double choice. He has to turn a little bit. He played a little bit fast and in that case, but kicking, taking just a, a small part of the ball. The result is uh, in a mismatch between the the, the, the white and the, and the yellow speed of the ball. So now easy shot, three cushion shot for Paolo Marcolin. Quite perfect, eight points, 16 to zero. Just reverse English, as you can see from the replay and from the drawing. So quite close to perfection. I mean, Svoboda may have the chance to play even uh, a reverse English shot on the long rail, the same one that played a couple of uh, shots ago, Paolo Marcolin just to avoid the keys, which is basically what you don't have to do on this shot. A little bit too open, uh, was aiming too, uh, too steep and even maybe with too much English, so the combination of both things came up to this situation, did in any case three points with uh, quite a good uh, position of both balls and Paolo Marcolin has to solve this with a two cushion shot, no English to get the white one into the pins, two points, very well played, good defense position. Very nice. Now what I think will approach a two cushion shot, can play a mid or a full garufa. And let's see. It's full, so he has to aim more or less at the second diamond. And on the first one, the, the ball is coming steep because of the reverse English. He was taking the yellow ball on the opposite side and was needed. So now Marcolin, I think, has, can play a two cushion shot exactly with the Reverse, reverse English, so eight points, even quite close to perfection. Not easy to get a uh, good defense, but I mean, with uh, eight points uh, in the pocket, that's absolutely okay within that, that shot. And even 26 to 3. Svoboda has a uh, uh, filotto, so we'll approach, try to get the yellow ball on the left side with some English even on the left side, not English given. It was quite easy to see from uh, the aiming that uh, we saw from the, the camera. So the, the yellow ball can only stay where it is if you take it quite full. And uh, quite the same shot for Paolo Marcolini. He has the possibility to go on the second, so on the starting short rail to get into the, the pins. So in the center line, that's it. Two open, two points only. And then the same shots for Pavel Svoboda. So 28 to 3. Svoboda has the chance to lower distance between uh, him and Marcolin. Not an easy shot. I mean, just need some reverse English 
and uh, doesn't need uh, any kind of uh, other English. He played not with the reverse, but uh, uh, like playing on top. Uh, it's uh, quite the same. Maybe it's a little bit difficult this kind of execution, but it's uh, very nice. So top spin, as you can see, the ball, white ball is going into the short rail, long rail, and then back to the short rail. That's it. Same, quite the same shot for Paolo Marcolin. That's uh, two points. Four points, sorry, for 32 at, for at 13, but now I think that Svoboda has the chance to see. Let's see. No, I cannot see the yellow ball, so he has to play a two cash on shot. Quite the same that he was playing before. So I think Garufa will be played over here. I will go uh, aim more or less between the second and third diamond, just like we, have, we see now. Block shot, good tempo, good execution, and very good. The fact that open lines to get. Uh, uh, it was a little bit too fast, but the Red Bull was helping him in finding a very good position. So Marcolin cannot play directly, will play two cash on shot. With, uh, that's 3 9 English little bit faster than usual because we can find this one this is a the possibility to do pins or even uh, the red ball very well played scoring is moving again so 35 at for Paolo Marcolin and 13 for Pavel Svoboda yeah, can play a one cash on shot directly to the pins or also a two cash on shot which is not easy to manage for the white ball, let's see what uh, Svoboda will choose. Can play fast or slow, it's uh, just personal. It's uh, in the mid, it's not fast, it's not, not slow, it's uh, a mid speed. Uh, he found not the pins, uh, quite uh, a good position for both balls. And, uh, Marcolini is playing just uh, a defense, so taking the white one more or less uh, the top left, so in the, in the bottom left part of the table, but he wanted to take his ball into the opposite corner. That's what was happening. So it's uh, the fact that when you don't know or you don't even have the chance to do the pins, in this case, because there was also the red one, which was closing the lines for the pins, and it's not useful maybe only to play with the red two pins and maybe leave an easy shot to the opponent. So, for Svoboda, now it's not easy to manage it. The fact is, exactly he was playing the wrong ball, but it's even a free ball because. Uh, He was playing the wrong ball, so <laughs> what was happening here is that uh, there should have been uh, a free ball for Paolo Marcolin because Svoboda was playing the wrong ball, but he was telling to Svoboda not to play uh, the yellow one, and the fact is that uh, the players cannot play cannot talk each other because it's a fall. So the fair play that uh, was used from Paolo Marconi was in the fact against him. So the ball in hand was, was for Svoboda. And then uh, he did four points. Now Marconi has an easy shot, can score a lot, maybe 10 or 12 points. It's uh, the opposite of what's happening uh, in the carom. Uh, so basically, in the carom, you can take tell to the uh, opponent that uh, he's playing the wrong ball and nothing happens. In the five pins, not. We are starting from the fact that you have a white and a yellow ball, and if you are not on concentration and you don't know which one is your ball, it's white enough to look at the scoreboard. 
you easily see if you are playing the white or the yellow. Nice trick, trick action, direct shot for Svoboda. So five points and East ball close to, to the corner. 45 for Paolo Marcolin, 24 for Pavel Svoboda. Was trying to get a hook inside uh, and to find uh, some pin and some position. No way. Now Svoboda has the chance to play a three cushion or a five cushion shot. <coughs> Let's see what will be the, the choice. Nothing with the previous shot for Pavel Svobod and then a seven cushion shot which was coming directly into the pins for Paolo Marcolin. Seven points, good position over there. Let's see how Pavel Svobod will approach that one. At this stage he has to find also some kind of defense. will do three points but leave an easy shot to Paolo Marcolin 27 52 and Paolo has the chance to, sh to close the, uh, the set twelve points perfect so first set for Paolo Marcolin and then a little break for us We are again, so Paolo Marcolin started with the second set, just to explain you something, if you want to find out in the rules of the five pins that you can find on the CEB website, uh, the fold detective to Paolo Marcolin, so it's the indication of the ball, it's the article 3007 and the second point, uh, so it's not possible in, uh, in this game to tell that is written, that the opponent is, pl is playing the wrong ball because uh, there is two penalty points and the free ball that was correctly Oliver Pind did during this set. So two cash on shot to approach uh, the yellow ball to be sent on the long rail to the pins, short in terms of speed and very close. So possibility for Paolo Marcolin to play or a filot or a two-cushion shot. Let's see, I think he will play for a filot. So reverse uh, right English, white into the pins. No problem in getting also the red one. So you can move also this one by doing uh, an opening uh, a set. So you cannot manage the yellow ball, but you can manage the fact that you did 11 points and it's a good start in a set at 60 points. You found a very good position anyway, so a little bit of luck from for Paolo Marcolin. 11 to 0. And uh, Svoboda has to find the line for a four cash on shot because the fifth uh, is where the yellow ball is linked to and then to find a uh, good speed which 
this is not the case, we will touch the ball, but he can find the position maybe by chance. So now Marcolina has the chance to play, I believe, a three cash on shot direct if the red ball is not hiding, as I don't believe it is. Now it's, so he's playing a two cash on shot. To take the yellow one, in, the white one into the pins and the yellow close to the corner. A little bit too open, no pins, but it was, let me say, parking the yellow ball close to the corner. Not an easy shot for Svoboda. He has to turn a little bit as a play, uh, two cushion shot, starting from the line of the three cushion, while I think that he's looking after a four cushion shot. Let's see. There are three possibilities. Up to him to choose. What, which one is the best to get the yellow ball? He's just turning around the pins from the left part of the cast the, 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 of the castle, just we, we call it in Italy. A good, good shot. Good speed, he took too much part of the ball. There is also the chance to do pins if you play like this because you are getting the yellow ball in the long rail, then on the other long rail the ball can come into the pins. It's a possibility if you play on the thick part of the ball. So defensive shot for Paolo Marcolin, play position, and we call it into the five pins, so not easy to find a good solution, even if I think that there is enough space to play a three cushion shot. Uh, of course, the red one is uh, maybe hiding part of the pins or totally the pins, so you, you can play also to put the yellow, ba the yellow ball close to the red, bo the red one and find even Svoboda a good position, maybe also doing three points. It was approaching fast the shot, so it's mismatch. I don't know if he was playing a three cushion shot or a two cushion trying to get uh, the yellow ball very thin. Anyway, Paolo Marcolin has a good chance to do a lot of pins, which is what he's doing. 14 points, 10 within the pins and 4 by hitting with this ball, the red one. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So it's running up 25 to 0. Svoboda has the chance maybe to play a three cushion shot or fast on the pins. Let's see. Was playing a two cushion shot. Little bit of luck because he took the red ball, which uh, was closing the line of the yellow one, not going into the pins. So one cushion shot with. Reverse English for Paolo Marcolin, not easy to get into the pins, but the idea of uh, doing this kind of uh, drawing with the two balls, just for a defense, it's okay. Now Svoboda has the chance to play a two cushion shot, uh, starting from where he is, he has to aim more or less, where he's uh, the first diamond that you see on the bottom of the table with uh, a little bit of reverse English which maybe in a new table just like this one is not necessary. Was aiming too much before, so was getting the opposite ball before, three points. But now another opportunity for Paolo Marcoin to play for the pins directly. He can even play to do 11 or 13 points. <coughs> Left-handed, as you can see. Just playing with the top spin, so five points. Two from the, fin the pins and three with the red ball. Anyway, good. It's moving into 30, so half of the set is gone now for Marcolin. Six points for Pavel Svoboda. He's trying to play a two cushion shot or a four cushion shot depend on the speed let's see two cushion eight points i believe six points and uh, quite a good defense uh, because uh, 
Paolo cannot play a three cushion shot. So well played from Pavel. No. I was wrong. I was able to see the oppon the opponent's ball was trying to to play a three cushion shot by opening maybe a little bit with some English. A little mismatch so to open. He also uh, had uh, a kiss at the end uh, of the of the shot, so now Svoboda has the chance to play maybe a, or directly or a filotto, let's see, because it can come up from the short rail on the pins, even from wh where he's starting from, so he can do two and then eight, which is what's happening. Not lucky. Yes. Very good speed, could have been 10 instead of 2, which have made a difference between going to 14 or going to 22. So it was missing maybe a little bit of English. One cushion shot for Paolo Marcolin, very well played, 4 points, good defense. Ball was moving also close to the red. Quite uh, easy to detect the line to get the opponent's ball. Not easy, maybe to manage to pull to send the ball on into the pins. Also, Boboda, I think he will play fast on the red. As far as I can see, trying to let move the red one for a ca four cushion shot to open. So it's just like on into the six rays, but no chance to go into the pins. Now Marcolin with the white ball has the chance to play directly. He's playing uh, Filotto with a little bit of re reverse English to keep straight the ball after the second rail. Too much in that case, so no pins for him. The English, when you do it, uh, some kind of shot, you are very, very close. Maybe it's quite, maybe, I mean, doubled, we can say, so this is a mistake which probably was coming up from the fact that we he had balls very close. So Svoboda now has the chance to play even himself a two cushion shot. Not a lot of English needed, just like he is playing actually. Approaching more or less at uh, the mid of the, yes, two diamonds, exactly. Faster than my comment. Too much speed. So now Marcolin will have the chance, I believe, to play a two cushion shot. There is also the red ball at the end uh, over here, so even if he yes, if he, if he was playing an open shot, may find as it may happen a good defense. Too short, so now it's I think it's uh, the time for Svoboda. He can maybe play directly on the yellow one and play a filotto. Left English on his ball, he has to catch the yellow ball on the left part. The combination of both may occur in a very good shot just like this one could have been eight or ten points but well played you can see that the english was taking even straight also the white ball no kiss so he avoided also this one and then caruffa for paolo marcolin approach from the good part so he took the worst part of the ball into a, a Garufa. So now again for Svoboda the chance to play directly. Same shot as before, closer than before, but left English, left part of the yellow ball. In that case, I believe looking at what's happening on the white ball, not enough English. But the combo of these two can be decided by the player. You can, people can manage the shot with English or without. It depends on how much of the opponent ball are you aiming or trying to get. So even here, Paolo Marco, very good shot, eight points. Managed to stay on the mid part of the table. And also his ball with the English was coming close to the short rail. Was quite developing to get close to the long rail. So now 
no chance for Svoboda to play directly. He's playing not Egarufa, but with uh, positive English. Not easy to get out of this situation with this kind of shot, with this English, because or you, or you come from two cushion and it's even not easy to find a solution or you have to play a Garufa, which maybe was not the, the shot that was thinking Svoboda. So easy play for Marcolin, 10 points, 52 to 19. In the meantime, we have uh, another match that was finished. So Schachner from Austria was uh, defeating Dvoracek 2-0. Now 52-19 for Paolo Marcolin. So Schachner moves up and Voracek is out of the tournament actually. Mismatch from Svoboda was losing six points, not finished yet the, the match. So 58 for Marcolin, 19 for Svoboda. I think that it will be the last shot of the match. And it's like that, so it finished. Two set to zero. Marcolin is coming to the last 32. Svoboda hits out, and then in this uh, group it's also Thomas Andersen to move up to the last 32. So we see each other for the next four matches, which will be the last 32, so they, they will be starting uh, in uh, more or less a couple of hours, so it's uh, starting from 3.30, so one, one hour we start with the last 32, uh, and every two hours we will have uh, a match, which will be not best of three, but best of five. See you in more or less one hour, thanks a lot for following us.